Okay. So we're going to start now with the next talk uh, from Varavara Stepanova uh, from Yandex, which is Russia's biggest web search engine. Um, it's a bit of a shift in pace and topic from the last three talks. This talk is um, maintainable front-end development with BEM, or block element modification. This is a technique for writing scalable CSS or building scalable high-performance sites, which are not just scalable in terms of your users, but also in terms of maintenance. So to ensure that if you have lots of developers working on your website, you have a common way of changing things in one place, making sure that people understand what's going on at different parts of your code. So Varavara leaves the uh, a front end team of developers there. Some of them are here with us today. Um, so there's Vladimir and Vladimir. They've made it easy for us. So <laughs> and um, they'd, like, they'd uh, be happy to take any questions that you've had later on today. Just catch any of them uh, through the day. There is a speaker's meeting room just to the left of the registration desk if you want to meet anybody, have a chat one-on-one -on -one with them. Uh, so just, sorry? There's also a meetup on Sunday. More details from, yeah. At You'll 2 p.m. at uh, CIA's office, we have a meetup with uh, Benjamin and uh, Barbara about Logpad and BEM. Okay. On so Sunday. Uh, if you want more details about a meetup, there's one on Sunday. Just you could raise your hand, people will catch you. Yeah. All right. So just another thing, BEM is completely open source and it's on GitHub, so you can take a look there. Thank you. Hello. Um, first, thank uh, you for kindly introducing me. Uh, I'm Barbara. And my talk is uh, maintainable front-end development with BAM. Uh, actually, it's my first talk in English uh, with such a large audience. So I appreciate a lot Meta Refresh for accepting me as a speaker, and of course you for coming. So, well, let's start. This is me with a friend. I'm a front-end developer working for Yandex, which is the largest internet company in Russia. We began as a search engine uh, back in uh, 1997, and now we enjoy the major share of the local market. We provide search service for web, image, uh, video, and many associated services such as uh, webmail, uh, web maps, marketplace, as well as mobile applications. And uh, uh, next 30 minutes, I'll be first talking about uh, usual development cycle and what are the problems it brings. Then uh, about our solution for, for these problems, which is BAM, and how it changes development workflow. And then some recent things uh, we'll be working on. So uh, let's start with describing how things happen usually. Oh, you all know that uh, when you need uh, an interface to be done, uh, you first go to a designer to prepare a PSD image of this web interface. And then uh, this image can proceed to a markup guy to be sliced into HTML and CSS. Uh, sometimes you need help of JavaScript Ninja to equip this uh, HTML dummy with some magic. And then uh, when dummy is ready, it goes to a server-side guy to be implemented into a function in website. And the, these are separated st stages, and uh, every stage takes some time. Well, you can see clocks here, and uh, uh, some time marked red, and some marked green. W why? This is because uh, uh, the work uh, done at every stage cannot be fully reused at the next stage. So uh, I marked red at the time this is uh, just wasting. And this is why I uh, call this process uh, lossful. And the problems are that uh, when every stage begins, 
you need to decompose web interface uh, mentally in your head and uh, detach uh, independent pieces of this web interface. This is what uh, uh, HTML CSS guy does, then gets a solid piece of PSD image. This is what JavaScript guy uh, that also does, and uh, server-side programmer as well. And uh, even if uh, they all are one person, uh, again, these are different roles, and that uh, causes difficulties. <coughs> so, uh, and also, if you need some changes in your web interface after you already started developing it, you um, uh, almost, uh, almost always you need to start from providing these changes on your PSD image, and then go through development cycle again unless you allow your designer to make changes into a uh, functioning website, but that happens uh, not always. And uh, the worst thing is that uh, when returning to provide some maintenance work on your web interface, uh, when you come back, you cannot reuse your own work of decomposing web interface done at previous iteration. So, um, facing these problems, uh, we at Yandex, as veterans on front-end development, came to our sol own solution for these problems. And now, uh, these solutions are united under the NEAT TLA, BAM, uh, which I'm going to present now. Actually, BAM is a whole world on its own. And it's uh, methodological recommendations on how to uh, develop modular web in CSS, JavaScript, templating, and actually any technology. It's some uh, file structure recommendations for your project. It's uh, a bunch of reusable code libraries. It's uh, many helpful tools and optimizers for production code, and uh, even its own template engine. But I'm going just to uh, quickly introduce w what's the uh, uh, main theme of BAM. I know you, um, or BAM was already introduced to you last year in Premin Kumar's presentation, but just uh, to refresh your memory, BAM stands for Block Element Modifier, and these are three main terms of BAM, which I'm going to use uh, when explaining. First uh, is block, and this is an independent component. And actually, every page consists of these independent components, blocks. As for HTML, block can be represented as a DOM node, which you can see in the slide. <coughs> uh, within blocks, sometimes you can find elements. And uh, this makes a clear picture of what elements are. This is a tablet pane block with two type elements and one panel element. And uh, actually, maybe this is much um, Also, a uh, block is a DOM node within, mm, uh, an element is a DOM node within its block. And uh, for even better explanation, I found the picture. Well, you know, uh, these pieces make no sense on their own. These are elements, but just put them together and you end up with something useful. <laughs> so, mm, uh, and the last term is a modifier. Uh, that is a property to provide changes on a block or an element. So, uh, as you can see, uh, already familiar tablet pane block can be modified with a, with a blue theme or uh, with a direction modifier. Um, that's all, just three terms to describe any web interface. So, using these terms, uh, we at Yandex uh, realized uh, three of our desired wishes, which are uh, in the slide. How that happened? First thing was uh, problems when you need changes uh, in your layout in your web interface after development was already started. 
Uh, sometimes uh, a product manager comes to you and asks you to move one block from the left side of the page to the right side uh, of the same page. And uh, due to your architectural solution, that uh, might be not possible. Uh, uh, what people usually do, they team managers and they train them out of doing this, out of asking such things. But uh, there is other, other way. Uh, we can uh, came up with an architectural solution uh, allowing us to, to do such thing. And this architectural solution is uh, independent CSS blocks. Uh, I mean that uh, a block can be fit into any place on the page so that uh, it won't uh, be affected by its parent blocks and, and at the same time it won't affect children blocks. Uh, to do this, uh, you need just to follow some rules when developing CSS, which are, uh, first, a block should be named, and I recommend to uh, use CSS classes, not IDs, but CSS classes for that, because, uh, you know, IDs uh, must be unique within a page, and we cannot predict if the block, uh, our current block, will be repeated in the page in the future or not. And uh, also, uh, please avoid tag selectors. This is to ensure that a block won't uh, affect I I its children. And the last recommendation is avoiding cascade. Actually, uh, I see it sounds a bit provocative, a recommendation on avoiding cascade when using cascade in style sheets. Uh, so uh, I'm going to explain. Well. Uh, I believe that uh, Cascade is a very, very good feature of CSS because it's, uh, it allows us uh, to express dependencies between entities naturally. Cascade uh, says that one thing does depend on the other thing. But the problem is that uh, people usually use Cascade not to express dependency, but uh, to code uh, some similar things, things that look similar. And uh, that uh, causes uh, many problems because then interface changes. You need to f mm, you need break this connection between uh, ca cascading entities. And uh, actually, people do something like this, or even worse. And they add even more connection in, in, into their system, and that uh, turns code into spaghetti. So this is why avoiding cascade helps uh, keep your code nice and neat. And what's more, it helps uh, improving uh, rendering performance. Uh, actually, uh, I know that this information uh, may be not new for you because uh, I've seen a link shared in uh, a Facebook group of Bangalore front-end developers, and the link uh, explained the stuff. Uh, but for those of you who need some proofs, I placed the link in the slide, and you can check out and see how avoiding cascade helps with rendering. So uh, that's all, the idea of independent CSS blocks. And now who uh, uses this? Of course, this is ours, Yandex. And uh, you can see link in the slide. This is for those who would like to have a deeper dive uh, into this stuff. This is my previous presentation uh, given in Riga, Latvia. I turned it uh, into a very well illustrated text. And actually now it's, a, it's an article. And it uh, explains at length uh, what to do when uh, for implementing independent CSS blocks and why. Uh, also uh, at GitHub, guys uh, faced sa the same problems uh, in CSS and they can, came up with very similar solution uh, the, which, you can, uh, which you can learn from, from the link again in the slide. This is uh, their slide from presentation where, uh, where they explained their solution. Then uh, I'd like to introduce you in Inuit CSS framework by Harry Roberts. This is a guy from United Kingdom, and it uses uh, BAM principles uh, to implement, 
uh, to develop his framework. And also he uh, published a lot of articles with explanations. And of course, uh, I can't uh, help mentioning uh, very famous object-oriented CSS and SMAX frameworks, which are also modular solutions in CSS. It's uh, actually a very fashionable item. And now to, to the next wish, as, as, as many programmers, maybe all programmers, we'd like to avoid copy-paste when developing. And uh, actually you can use an obvious way to achieve this. Uh, just detach blocks into separate CSS file, and so uh, you won't repeat similar pieces of code. Uh, with such detaching, uh, you can have uh, a bunch of blocks uh, in your project, and then you can use the, these uh, CSS pieces to build up uh, your CSS for pages using an input keyword. So, that makes it uh, possible to share code with friends, emailing, or even better, you can use version control system to store your blocks and share with everywhere. This is how uh, libraries of blocks can be linked to a project, uh, to several projects actually, from a uh, library's repository. But again, uh, when doing this, uh, we can uh, face a new problem because uh, Services, uh, websites, they are not the same. They are um, a bit different. Uh, even uh, services of one company are a bit different. And so we need somehow to provide uh, changes uh, from service to service, somehow tune block, uh, blocks from, from the library. And this is where uh, I need to introduce you the fourth term, I promised the last which is block level. Actually, uh, every bunch, every group of block uh, is a block level, and library itself is block level. But the same uh, service can, has, uh, can have uh, its own block level so, and somehow tune uh, blocks from the library. Let's see how that can happen. Oh. Oh, you can <coughs> see that... Uh, <coughs> Code from the library is linked to the project, and uh, project itself has some code. And then you can see that uh, library can provide uh, header block, red colored, and uh, at, at service uh, you can redefine uh, block from the library and make it green colored. And of course, when building pages, you need to take blocks from all the levels. Uh, so that browser can merge to, to your implementations and uh, show your service in an appropriate way. I agree that it's not a very good idea to do some such bundling manually. And so I'd recommend to use some uh, automation tools like uh, make, rake, grant, and whatever. As for us at Yandex, uh, we used uh, GNUMIC file for such building, uh, but, now provide, uh, but now we uh, came up with uh, our own solution. It's uh, JavaScript-based to be run under Node.js, providing command line interface, and uh, hosted on GitHub. Uh, well, the solution called BAM tools, and uh, it's uh, for many things, and also for building pages from blocks. And the, the third wish is uh, unified semantic. You can see uh, a block here with some dynamic functionality. And you know that uh, that's not enough just to provide uh, CSS, just to link CSS to your page to make this block function. You need JavaScript as well. And uh, those of you uh, who used Bootstrap know that uh, first you go to one place to get CSS, and then uh, you go to another place uh, to get JavaScript. Uh, 
the other solution code uh, components by uh, T.J. Havelchuk uh, knows that uh, components uh, need both CSS and JavaScript, and so do we at BAM. Yeah. We uh, scale modular uh, idea from CSS to JavaScript, and uh, with that idea, you can detach JavaScript logic into pieces, and then uh, into blocks, and then uh, place uh, JavaScript uh, describing of block near its CSS describing. And uh, it's very useful to place it under block folder, as you can see in the slide. And uh, actually, even better, we can scale this solution a li little bit more. And uh, we can use uh, pictures uh, for representing blocks, and we can use templating solutions for them, uh, and actually any technology that you need. For example, you can use two templating solutions if you, if you need one for one service and uh, another one uh, for service with a different platform. This is uh, what we used to use at Yandex. And, uh, you can provide documentation on, well, for in every entity on your library. And, uh, and that uh, makes no changes in the sharing scheme because uh, you still have uh, your library linked to projects. Uh, so, uh, just uh, these three ideas uh, they uh, brought us to new development workflow. And uh, the, what's behind this workflow is very simple. It's very famous uh, idea, divide and conquer. Uh, very sim famous phrase from uh, history, uh, <laughs> politics, even from computer science. Uh, when you need uh, something difficult to be done, just divide it, uh, divide it into small pieces and go. So, so do we when developing uh, web interfaces. We first divide and uh, break web interfaces into independent blocks, and then uh, we can implement them uh, separately. Uh, and, and each of them can have its own development cycle. Uh, with, uh, with such an idea, uh, you can uh, benefit. And benefits are, first, uh, single language for developers of different majors. So your, your designer, your JavaScript guy, your server-side guy, they operate the same terms, and that uh, very helps with communication. And then uh, you can get independent blocks, which can be easily added to the page, very easy uh, moved within a page, and uh, easily removed. Also, uh, you keep your code very maintainable, and uh, that, makes, uh, no, uh, that makes no problems if you need to come back to your web interface uh, in a year or two and provide some changes. And uh, what every developer loves to do, you need to constantly refactor your code, because blocks are independent, and uh, there are very weak connections between blocks. This is why we can change one block and be sure that uh, nothing will be broken uh, in the other side of the page. Oh. So, uh, this is actually why I love them. <laughs> well, and, uh, but uh, also behind the me methodology, there are very nice he helpers. And uh, the idea of these helpers coming is that um, I believe that uh, we humans do not like what robots like. But uh, very often when programming, uh, people usually um, try to please robots, uh, try, try to make them happier. And uh, this is why we are developing code for a browser uh, to, to browse the work faster, more efficient, but I believe that uh, things uh, shouldn't be done this way. We humans uh, should code uh, for our pleasure. We should code in a very semantic way and uh, understandable for other people. And this is the robot's responsibility to somehow uglify this code 
and turn it into a very efficient one. So this is why BAM team pro produces many helpful tools. The first one is uh, BAM tools, which I already introduced to you before. Then uh, you can be also be interested in uh, Borshik. This is a tool to flatten CSS and JavaScript. Well, coming back to last example, um, as you know, it's not a very good idea to supply a browser with a long list of CSS imports. Uh, because every import uh, causes an HTTP request and takes time. So uh, for production, uh, you can use Borshik and uh, inline content from these CSS files into a long, uh, long CSS sheet. And the same for JavaScript. Uh, Borshik can uh, flight in JavaScript as well. <coughs> the next interesting tool is CSSO which is uh, optimizer, unlike others. It's uh, very clever. And uh, again, coming back to a previous example, when we tuned CSS uh, at the next level, um, here CSSO can uh, help to prepare code for production and uh, remove redu redundant CSS code. And actually, I it can do much more uh, but I just don't have time to, ex to explain uh, at length. And, uh, but you can explore yourself uh, with the link, uh, these tools and many other. And now about uh, recent things we've been working on in BAM world. Well, oh, yeah, th this slide was added yesterday. <laughs> I'm very happy uh, to share with you a link to a uh, Smashing Magazine article about uh, how uh, BAM evolved through time and technological changes. Uh, this article was published uh, yesterday, especially from Meta Refresh. So uh, again, for those of you who uh, would like to have a deeper dive and uh, better understanding, uh, you can check the article. It's uh, extremely long. Uh, but it very well explain, uh, explains uh, what were the problems we faced and why we came up with <coughs> such a solution. And uh, as for things uh, which are under development now, well, we at Yandex uh, now have a common library, or our internal uh, library of blocks that uh, provides uh, over 100 of interface components. And, uh, but we just decided that uh, this is too many and uh, we decided to have uh, several block libraries for different, uh, different kinds of services. Again, we still, we, we still have a uh, common library, but also uh, libraries for search services, library for map services, and so on. Um, it works because uh, with BAM, you can link uh, to a project as many libraries as, as, as you like. And so uh, here you can see a project uh, using a common library and search library and maps library at the same time, and also tuning all those, these libraries at its level. But uh, to make it function, uh, to make it workable, uh, we need uh, for every library we need to provide a website with uh, documentation and examples of uh, every blog, how to use it. And also the, the team developing such a library uh, must follow workflow, uh, which is uh, they must provide change logs from version to version. And uh, it's very good idea to use unit test uh, when developing a library. Uh, before, uh, we did it uh, without thinking how to share this solution. But uh, since we have many libraries now, we uh, started to develop a special tool that helps uh, uh, to generate documentation for a library. And uh, well, actually, this is in progress, but uh, it's the link to its repository. Uh, it already has some description, and uh, you, can, uh, you can check it out. Okay. Well, that's all. Now, uh, uh, what you can do with all this stuff? 
First, you can follow recommendations and uh, use uh, modular idea when developing uh, in any technology, any programming language. It might be CSS, JavaScript, templates, or whatever. And also, you can uh, follow file structure recommendations uh, if you like them. Uh, for building, uh, you can use your own tool or uh, just pick up BAM tools, which is uh, open source and absolutely free. Um, you can participate in the project, as I've, as I've already said, and as uh, Jack had ki kindly <laughs> said also. And uh, why I'm here? I know that uh, uh, there is uh, uh, a lot of uh, IT companies here, and I guess that uh, you also need uh, some distributive solution for web interface. And so you, you can uh, borrow our experience and um, implement your own libraries of blogs. They can be either closed source and house libraries, or even better, open source library. Uh, if, such, uh, if such libraries happen, I'll be very, very gladful to share them in Twitter or uh, when presenting in the future. So, um, for further information, you can uh, go to uh, our official band.info website. There are articles, tools, and explanations there. And, uh, now, thank you very much. And, uh, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Just one announcement with your questions. Be loud and clear. Uh, speak into the microphone, please. It's much easier for everybody in the cameras to catch it as well. Shall I go? Hello. <coughs> Okay, um, Vincent Hardy from Adobe. Sure. Oh. Hi. Uh, hi, Vincent Hardy from Adobe. I uh, have a question. Do you participate in, uh, in standards like uh, web components or trying to influence the, the future of standards in that space? Yeah, I know that uh, there is uh, some work um, on web components and uh, we checked them, but we just... Uh, um, so I don't know how, how to explain, but uh, we're just are waiting for them to evolve uh, to see if they uh, suit us or, or not. Okay, uh, that, that would be wonderful because you, uh, you yeah. have a lot of experience, it would be great input to the, the people working on that. Sorry? Uh, since you have a lot of experience, it would be great input for the, the, standards, uh, the standard people to, to know what you found and, and that might be a a way to influence what's coming out of, of oh, okay. those efforts yeah. too. Thank you very much. Hi. <coughs> uh, my name is Rajeshwar. I've been a practitioner of BAM for the past one year and I like OOCSS and uh, I also read SMACs. My question is not about a technology, it's more about your perspective. You are a UI lead uh, at Yandex, right? So how do you inculcate some sort of a enthusiasm or a discipline to new people coming in to practice such uh, good practice or, uh, or best practices like OOCSS and follow SMACs uh, discipline or even BAM for that matter. So how do you train them? How, how do you give them the idea? How do you give them the enthusiasm? Uh, could you please repeat? <laughs> okay, so uh, you are UI lead right yeah, yeah. so lots, lots of people work on lots of people work under you when new people come in right css html is a very broad thing everybody just starts writing it's like a double edged sword you can either swing it the right way or the left way so how do you inculcate or how do you help new people to practice these best practices like o css smacks discipline or even bam for it matter so how do you train them how do you make them happy that this is the right way to do it because in CSS, you can do it everything in a wrong way and still never realize that that's a wrong way. So uh, is the question about how we teach new people in the team? Yeah, you can answer that, that it will solve yeah. the problem. Actually, uh, um, in Russia, BAM is very popular. And sometimes uh, there is no need uh, to teach. 
but this is uh, because uh, we, BEM team, uh, take part in many conferences and provide many content uh, in Russian. Uh, as for people who are not familiar with, uh, with BEM, when they come to the team, uh, actually the benefits of BEM uh, become very clear to them then we face our problems at Yandex. And so they just uh, open documentation site. Uh, we have uh, our in-house uh, library very well documented. They just open the site and learn from it. So, more questions? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, I have some questions on Twitter. Uh, Bootstrap gives a robust and maintainable framework. Um, how to compare it with, with BAM? Actually, uh, we cannot compare it because uh, Bootstrap, uh, as you said, Bootstrap is a framework and uh, BAM is a methodology how to build your own framework. So uh, you can build Bootstrap with BAM. And uh, for, for an example, you can uh, again go to a website and uh, there you can find library code Bootstrap BL. Uh, this is uh, Bootstrap components uh, implemented according to BAM principles. So, uh, and uh, I'd like to be clear that BAM is not a solution for fast developing web interface. It's a solution for managing your teamwork and for developing maintainable web interface. This is, uh, and it does take time uh, to, to develop, uh, much more than just using Bootstrap. Um, I have a question. Uh, uh, so, uh, how does BEM? I mean, what's the uh, um, you know the right way to version your blocks? In the sense that, let's say, I have a header block today, which is could the you please a bit uh, a bit louder? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I have a header block. Mm -hmm. um, so, today it's a blue color header, and tomorrow I change this to a green color header, for instance. Um, now, Team A is using the old legacy header block, which is blue in color. And team B has a green color header, for instance. So, uh, would would BEM tell me to write a new block, completely different, and or does it actually have versioning in place for this kind of a problem? Hello. Thank you for the question. Uh, uh, we have also it BEM is not just a methodology. Uh, we have uh, special tools to. Uh, develop with BAM and um, they provide us possibility to uh, just um, start development server which uh, check uh, the libraries changed and your local changes and uh, build the final runtime together so when um, library developers change something you just uh, can refresh your page in the browser and um, if you didn't freeze on the uh, revision of the library you will get new code without any uh, troubles and um, it not just for CSS it also will work for JavaScript or even templates. Again, uh, uh, <laughs> again a question from Twitter. Uh, modular CSS is making markup and painting heavy. How to strike the balance? Uh, I guess this question was uh, answered before I presented uh, optimizing tools. And uh, this is uh, the idea of programming uh, I introduced. We develop uh, not to please uh, browsers, but uh, to make uh, it easier to code for ourselves. And this is the next step to optimize code to make it not so heavy and much more efficient. The dancer. Hello. 
Uh, hi, uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, you have a tool, Borschik, that uh, flattens CSS. Uh, do you have a similar tool for JS, for JavaScript? It's the same tool. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, how, how do you deal with namespace collisions and things like that? Uh, again, please. So, in JavaScript, it's just a little more complicated because you have, you know, you can you can have same the same function name in different blocks and things. Correct. Let me try to, to answer. Well, yeah. actually, Borschik is a universal tool that uh, could flatter in everything, ev uh, everything that is a text file. So, uh, for example, CSS and JavaScript is some sort of APIs or pl plugins for it. So, actually, we are. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, uh, it doesn't resolve some namespaces or just. It just flattering. It just. Uh, uh, it just flattering the files. So, the na uh, so our. So we're trying to write our blocks as, uh, so uh, with no, uh, with no uh, garbage in uh, some glo global space. And so uh, our blocks are usually closured with some sort of okay. closure so function. So, so, so you basically module, put it inside a module. Yep. So yep. do you use anything like uh, RequireJS or any standards around modularization of JavaScript? Uh, actually, no, I guess. Uh, as I know, no, we, we don't yeah. use it. And uh, we don't need this uh, because uh, uh, we use Borschik. And uh, as for developing, uh, we use uh, special mm, special command uh, provided by BAM tools called BAM server. And uh, it flattens uh, when you're developing. You can change file and then refresh a page and uh, it immediately flattens all what you need. So, so this BAM server, you'll be running on your machine and so you can ch check to see if there are any yes. collisions and things like that. Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Hi. Um, Here. Uh, hi. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, when you started off your talk, you mentioned about uh, the old process where you make Photoshop and then HTML, CSS and everything, right? Um, how does this uh, change that, that part of the, the initial part? Like, what does the designer who works on Photoshop have to do differently to, um, you know, adapt with this process? Or does it not matter to them at all? So if uh, these rows are united uh, in one person, yeah, the, I know that uh, happens uh, very often. But uh, again, these are different roles. And uh, when switching from stage to, cha to stage, uh, when changing your role, you um, uh, again have some losses. And uh, with BAM, uh, it's easier to keep focused on the components themselves and uh, not on the technologies. Uh, because uh, with BAM, uh, interface components, blocks, they are uh, primary. And the technologies uh, which are used for implementation, they are secondary. So. Hi. Uh, how easy or difficult is to use other people's code, like other libraries? Could with you please BAM? a bit louder. Uh, how difficult is it to use other people's libraries or code with BEM? Uh, uh, because they are not going to use similar standard as yours. Okay. Uh, well, Thank you. Um, for the new developer who is uh, just trying to learn BAM, it uh, would be a bit harder, but um, when you will learn how to manage with it, uh, each new library will be just yet another uh, level of blocks. So uh, in comparison, for example, with uh, Bootstrap, you need to uh, find CSS, uh, JavaScript, and maybe some images for any component you get from there. With BAM, you need just to take a uh, block mm -hmm. definition, and BAM tools will find uh, CSS and JavaScript for it and build it to your website without uh, any uh, troubles for you. I think that uh, if, they, if you have any further questions, I'm going to ask you to uh, chat with. Uh, 
both the Vladimir's and Vara Vara. Yeah, uh, actually they'll be at uh, Meetup yep. on, on Sunday. And yep. there, uh, Vladimir, the, the first one, uh, will have its uh, workshop about how to write JavaScript on BAM. And also, after that, we'll have a long uh, question answer section about BAM. And uh, you can prepare your uh, questions in advance and then uh, ask there. And, uh, also, I'd like to advertise a bit. <laughs> we have some uh, nice stickers which we can share with you. Uh, I'm going to uh, leave them uh, at the tea table and uh, you can pick up. Uh, speaking of tea, it's lunchtime. So, <laughs> uh, let's, uh, lunch is downstairs. Make a U turn, it's on your right hand side. Just make sure that you're back here sharp at 2.15. We'll start the next session, which is Akash's, sharp at 2.15. Okay. Thank, you Thank you very you. much.